This video is brought to you by the Renewed Mind Healing Institute, and I'm your host, Nicole. I want to thank you for stopping by our broadcast channel. Our subscribers mean everything to us, so please take a moment to hit the red subscribe button and then click the bell for notifications each and every time we share new healing and enriching content. We're glad you're here. Let's get started. Today we're going to watch an excerpt from one of our favorite courses offered at the Renewed Mind Healing Institute. Be sure to check out the video description below for information on how you can join us in class from home or to check out all the courses and programs we offer at the Institute. We welcome everyone with a love of learning. Now on to the video. In this video we'll talk about waking up. The first part of everyone's day is the way you wake up. Consider this idea. If the first sentence to your paragraph is weak, nobody's going to read through the rest of it, even if the rest is beautifully scripted. The same goes for your morning. If your morning doesn't go the right way, no matter what happens through the rest of your day, it'll remain a bad day because of the way it started. It's an inevitable chain reaction that you can prevent if you simply pay more attention to how your morning goes. The first step is waking up in a better spirit. The easiest way to do this is by rising early. Now, usually when you wake up early, you feel horrible. You see the time and groan, wondering why you woke up at such an early hour. But what's making you wake up in such a bad mood is the time you fall asleep. And the question is, what time did you fall asleep? How did your sleep go? What caused your bad night? How can you prevent that bad night from ever happening again so your mornings are better? If you haven't realized it yet, this is all one big cycle. To have a good morning, you need a good night's sleep. To get a proper night's sleep, you need the right amount of sleep. And you need to go to sleep feeling good. In order for you to have a peaceful rest with a happily tired mind, you should have had a good day. To have a good day, you need to wake up on the right side of the bed. This cycle never ends, but there will always be a starting point. Hopefully from this course, you can have better understanding of your future path and how to navigate your destiny. How to start your day. No one can tell you how to live the perfect day. What's a perfect day to you could be a disastrous day to someone else. So the most anyone can do for you is point you in a direction that you might like. Cliched, but true. Any good morning starts on the right side of the bed. And in most cases, the right side of the bed faces the window in your room. So you can catch a glimpse of the first rays in the light blue sky. Any morning you want to be worth it involves all your favorite things. This could be a bubble bath or a warm cup of espresso to kickstart your mind. Some people read a book while their mind is fresh to reminisce about their favorite characters throughout the day. When you're starting a day, try to never start it on a bad note. Typically, if your day commences well, then the rest of the day doesn't seem so menacing and you can better handle situations you face through the morning, afternoon, evening, and night. Don't tackle anything stressful in the morning. Things you know will take a long time and hard effort, save for after you've spoiled yourself a little in the morning. Most people assume that time for yourself is at night or in the evening when the day comes to an end. While this is an understandable assumption, time in the evening should actually be dedicated to wrapping up and completing your day. The best time to spend on yourself is the morning when the sun is high and the day begins. Yes, you have to prepare for the following outcomes and responsibilities of the day, but that's why it's better to start your days earlier. Starting them earlier gives you more time to yourself, enough time to make the morning an enjoyable routine rather than one you resent. Value the time. Time is a precious aspect in life, which is why you should always be thankful for what you have, all the time you're given shouldn't go to waste. Plan out your day. Think of how to decisively make use of your time each day. Each passing minute is a minute you'll never get back, so make them all count. If you humble yourself, you'll have to be less pessimistic and enjoy each moment a little more. 
Don't get the wrong idea. This isn't an easy persona to adapt. It's much easier to hate, blame, judge, and resent than it is to relish, cherish, and be thankful. To those who are naturally positive and appreciative of all they have, salutations to them. But for all the others who still aren't as grateful as they should be, there are steps you can take to get there. For instance, make a list of all the things you can't live without. These are the things you must be thankful for. Every night, go to sleep right after you read through the list, remembering all the things you have and should appreciate. When you wake in the morning, whether you realize it or not, you'll subconsciously reflect back on the last thing you did before sleeping. If that was remembering your gratefulness, then your first emotions in the morning should be relief and relaxation, knowing you have your necessities. You'll also realize the more grateful you become, the longer your list will get. The longer the list gets, the happier and more fulfilled you'll feel figuring out how much of your life is truly a blessing. In a way, all you're doing is opening your eyes to the reality of what can be taken away from you. And in this world, that's everything. It's an odd and simple way to uncover your inner gratitude, but it works anyhow. Enjoying your day. After the morning, the rest of the day still lies ahead. What you do with the rest of your day will affect the way you sleep when nighttime comes. And how you sleep will determine the primary outcome of your morning. Remember, the cycle never ends and it's up to you to keep up. So since your morning has been taken care of and your thoughts of nostalgia and respect have been claimed by the silence of the night, what's left for the day? Everything else, chores, responsibilities, errands, and hobbies that deserve some recognition all fit into your day. Now that you've spent the whole morning to yourself, it's time to go outside and spend the rest of the day with others. This could be at work with your colleagues, keeping in touch with your social life, or visiting relatives for a long due family lunch. With at the very least 12 hours in the day when the sun shines on your path, you can surely find something to keep your mind active and occupied with optimistic thoughts. Stay light on your feet since anything can come your way. Think of the things to be thankful for. Recollect on the great morning you can have again and again to keep your spirits high. Your destination is eventually the night where you'll rest for the next day. So make your goal to reach the starry lit sky in high hopes for the following day called tomorrow. Read a good book. Indulge in some hobbies. Work out to shake off any stress or energy you may have left in the day. Your day reflects your morning. Haven't you ever had someone look at your expression and immediately say, rough night, or I see you woke up on the wrong side of the bed? Your morning has such a strong impact on your day. It literally shows on your face. So keep your head high because you want everyone to know that you know how to enjoy your morning and then, by extension, your day. Okay. I hope that video was helpful for you. Thanks for spending time with us today, and we sure appreciate that you're here. For more information and resources, check the video description below, or visit us online at renewedmindhealing.com. That's all one word. Until next time, I'm your host, Nicole, and may divine health and healing in your body, mind, soul, and nest be yours. See you again soon.